Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGD Vitastia. I'm a tea reviewer and professional calibrator. Today, I'm going to review Sony's brand new premium remote for 2019. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thiel. I'm a tea reviewer and professional calibrator. In this video, we're going to review the Sony XG95 Full Array Local Dimming LED LCD TV, which is also marketed as the Bravia X950G in the USA. First things first, where the XG95 ranks within Sony's 2019 TV lineup can be confusing to many people. Does it succeed last year's XF90? Does it replace the ZF9? So after clarifying with Sony, here's the lowdown. The XF90 will carry over and continue to be sold throughout 2019, although only in 25-inch and 65-inch sizes in the UK and Europe. I believe in the USA, the X900F will continue to be available in all screen sizes. The Sony XG95 is positioned as a slight step up to the XF90. 95 comes after 90. The ZF9 or Z9F will be slowly phased out from now until stock is depleted. And here's Sony's explanation on why. Sony Master Series TVs deliver the highest level of picture quality from the company to faithfully reproduce the creator's intent. But there can only be one Master Series TV for each size class, and for 2019, the 65-inch and 77-inch AG9 OLED will take over the Master Series mantle from the 65-inch and 75-inch F9 respectively. I know this is all more confusing than a family tree diagram of the Kardashians, but I guess you just want to know if the XG95 is worth buying over the XF90, so let's get on with it. Key features of the Sony XG95 include Full Array Local Dimming or FALD Direct Lead LED Backlighting, X1 Ultimate Video Processor, X Motion Clarity Black Zonal Insertion Technology, HDR Support for HDR10, HLG or Hybrid Log Gamma, and Dolby Vision formats, as well as Android Oreo 8.0 at launch. The 75-inch and 85-inch XG95 or X950G will feature the X Wide Angle technology from Sony, which from our previous test of the ZF9, does improve off-axis viewing angles, but at the expense of black level. While the 55-inch and this 65-inch version, model number KD65XG9505 we are reviewing today, don't have XY angle. The design is not a million miles away from the XF90, though there were some minor changes. The two feet sport a thinner, more streamlined shape. But Sony has stopped owners from being able to reverse the feet to point inwards, so you would need an AV furniture that is wide enough on which to place the television. If you are wondering why Sony insists on this sort of dark feet design, it's to accommodate a soundbar in between. The gunmetal grey bezel is impressively thin for an FALD LED LCD, and there's an accent along the bottom border of the screen. Fortunately, it is not as distracting as it sounds even in a pitch black room. The LCD screen itself is more reflective than OLEDs and Samsung's QLEDs, so bear this in mind if you are watching predominantly in a bright room. The connections are found mainly on the left rear of the television, including four full bandwidth HDMI 2.0b ports with HDCP 2.3 compliance, although among HDMI 2.1 features, only Enhanced ARC or EARC is implemented on HDMI Input 3. The XG95's cable management system is first-rate. Both feet have hollow grooves and plastic panels for you to route cables through and hold them in place, allowing for a very clean look from the front. There are a pair of side-firing tweeters at the rear of the television, which contributes to the acoustic multi-audio system to generate a wider soundstage. But of course, for proper Dolby Atmos and good bass reproduction, you still need an external home theater system. The Sony XG9505 ships with a faster SoC and Android Oreo 8.0 pre-installed, and even though the amount of RAM is lower than the AF9 and ZF9 at 2.5GB, it's still lightning fast to navigate in and out of the menus even after a couple of weeks of heavy use. And now, we come to the most significant non-picture related upgrade on the Bravia XG95, namely a new premium remote control, 
which has only taken a few years of complaining from users and AV journalists before Sony decided to replace the older, cheap-looking remote. The new remote is a pleasure to use. It's got a brushed metallic front finish, a textured back, and just the right length and weight, which is great to hold in the hand. The buttons are well laid out, and tactile feedback is infinitely more gratifying than the soft rubber buttons on Sony's previous remotes. I am a professional complainer, so I lament the fact that the remote control is not backlit for when I test TVs in total darkness. But overall, the new premium remote is a giant step forward from Sony's previous efforts. Before proceeding to talk about picture quality, I'd like to thank Crampton & More for sponsoring this video. They are an established UK retailer who have been kind enough to support this channel over the years, sometimes even loaning me TVs to review. I find the staff's knowledge of the products they sell to be excellent. They'll give you unbiased, independent advice for your purchase. So if you are considering buying a new television, even if it's not this Sony XG95, please call Crandall & More on 0113 244-6607 and ask for David Corner. Mention HTTV Test and he'll take care of you with great price and service. Thanks again for your support. The Sony KD65 XG9505 uses a V8-type LCD panel, as you can see from a macro shot of the subpixel structure here. After pegging peak white to 120 candelas per square meter, black level on our review sample measured 0.033 candelas per square meter, on a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern with local dimming disabled, which represents deep blacks by LED LCD standards. Due to the absence of XY angle technology, colors and contrast drop off fairly quickly off axis, which is to be expected from a VA LCD panel, so make sure you sit directly in front of the television for the best viewing experience. The Sony XG95 is equipped with full array local dimming or FALD backlighting and using our own custom order test pattern consisting a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background, we counted 6 vertical columns and 10 horizontal rows, giving us a total of 60 independently dimmable zones. In my opinion, Sony's local dimming algorithm is the best in the business. It strikes a wonderful balance between keeping blacks deep and blooming to a minimum. The biggest compliment I can pay to Sony's local dimming is that it very rarely draws attention to itself in terms of luminance fluctuations or dimming lag. However, given the limited number of local dimming zones, some blooming or hallowing artifacts are inevitable when there's a bright object against a dark background if watched in a pitch black room, especially in HDR where backlight is driven to maximum to fulfill the peak brightness demands of high dynamic range content. For instance, in this scene from The Matrix where the swinging lamp casts a glow that seeps into the top letterbox bar. As with the Sony XE93 and XF90, all high nit LED LCDs in fact, I strongly recommend the use of some gentle bias lighting to reduce the visibility of blooming and make letterbox bars look blacker. Next, colors. The Sony X950G or XG95 supports Kalman AutoCal, and after installing and using the Kalman for Bravia app, two extra picture modes will be unlocked, namely Custom for Pro 1 and Custom for Pro 2, which I normally reserve for daytime and nighttime calibration respectively. Furthermore, the original 10-point white balance will be expanded to 20 points with the Kalman for Bravia app, allowing for greater precision during calibration. Indeed, after calibrating our Sony XG95 review unit, none of the 140 color patches measured in this challenging color checker SG chart exhibited delta errors above 2, when delta error 3 is commonly accepted to be the humanly perceptible cutoff. In other words, at least for SDR content, every color, including skin tones, will look extremely natural and realistic. For UHD HDR content, DCI-P3 color gamut coverage was 94%, which is similar to last year's XF90, but not as high as the measurements on the OLEDs and Samsung's QLEDs. We checked the spectral power of distribution using our Jetty 1511 reference spectral radiometer, and confirmed that the Sony XG95 is using PFS or 
potassium fluorosilicate phosphor to achieve wider color gamut, judging from the narrow red peak here. In real-world application, most colors in 4K Blu-rays should still look fine on the Sony XG95, except for maybe some colors close to P3 gamut in animations which won't look as vibrant as on the OLEDs and QLED televisions. I've long regarded Sony's motion processing to be the best in the business, partly because its motion flow interpolation technology generally doesn't introduce as much interpolation artifacts and so opera effect or SOE as competing motion compensated frame interpolation from other TV brands. This is still true once the motion settings are set up correctly, but since the implementation of the X1 Ultimate chipset, the out-of-the-box motion performance has actually taken a slight step back chiefly because Sony has cut down the number of options in the motion flow and film mode settings. In the factory default motion settings in the most accurate picture modes, the scrolling news ticker in 50Hz broadcast would exhibit intermittent starter and tearing artifacts, suggesting hit and miss cadence detection. Fortunately, these artifacts can be eradicated by using the correct motion settings. Talking of which, you'll also need to manually enter the correct settings before the X-Motion Clarity Black Zonal Insertion technology is activated on the Sony X950G. Doing so will boost motion resolution from the sample and hold baseline of 300 lines to 1080 lines or even higher, all without any noticeable increase in flicker or drop in light output. And when you combine this high motion resolution with outstanding screen uniformity, we saw no significant bending or DSE on full field grey slides, although the corners are slightly darkened, which is typical of Sony LED LCDs. Please ignore the diagonal shadowing in this video, which wasn't present in real life viewing but was somehow captured on camera. As I was saying, the high motion clarity and DSE free screen uniformity makes sports like football an absolute joy to watch on the Sony XG95. Turning our attention to 24p films, Slow panning shots, such as this one from Wall-E, were handled smoothly without any sign of telecynic judder. Upscaling is excellent, retrieving sharp detail even from low resolution sources without incurring excessive rigging or fizziness, as you can see from this SMPTE RP133 test card in 576i. The smooth gradation feature worked well to reduce posterization in bit staffed content, but for some reason, can be over-aggressive in Dolby Vision picture mode causing a loss of detail even on the lowest setting, so we prefer to turn it off when watching Dolby Vision material. Which brings us to HDR. First, some core measurements. Peak brightness measured 1100 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point, which is slightly higher than last year's XF90, but not as bright as the XC93, XC94, ZD9 or ZF9. Full field peak brightness came in at a whooping 720 nits, one of the highest we've measured, which gives bright HDR scenes, such as this one from Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, the sort of dazzling impact that even the best OLEDs cannot match due to ABR restrictions. Of course, for dark scenes, OLED still reigns supreme. You just can't beat pixel level light control, certainly not with only 60 zones. Our KD65 XG95 review sample tracked the ST2084 PQE OTF standard fairly accurately. For HDR10 content, the TV ignores any static metadata and relies on dynamic tone mapping to adjust the tone curve so it can resolve even beyond 5000 nits on this 10,000 nit test pattern. In practice though, we found that the Bravia XG95 still favors preserving APL or average picture level, so some of the brighter specular highlight detail, for example, the sun in this scene from the 4K Blu-ray of Pan, will still be clipped. But this is in keeping with Sony's belief that it's better to protect overall brightness than to darken the image just to reveal every specular highlight detail which can be very fleeting. Even with smooth gradation disabled, the Sony X950G already presented the smoothest gradient in the skies of the Martian compared with its competitors. Engaging smooth gradation would just hammer home Sony's advantage in this regard. A couple more things I need to talk about HDR when it comes to streaming apps. First, the internal YouTube app now supports HDR out of the box, as you can see from this beautifully shot video here. Second. The internal Netflix app still exhibits more near-black posterization in certain Dolby Vision programs 
than the corresponding shows in HDR10. In the sequence from Jessica Jones displayed in Dolby Vision from the internal Netflix app, you can see noticeably coarser gradation at the back of the head. Whereas if we look at the same shot displayed in HDR10 over HDMI from a Panasonic UB9000 4K Blu-ray player, the tonal transition is smoother. To be fair, the situation is better than when I tested the AF9 OLED last year. Less programs seem to be affected on the XG95. For example, I checked out Daredevil and didn't see any near-black posterization that I saw on the AF9. Note that just like on the ZF9, Local dimming appears to be disabled in the internal TV Netflix app interface on the XG95, so you may see more clouding during Netflix loading screens. But rest assured that once the movie starts playing, the local dimming will operate perfectly fine to boost contrast performance. For gaming, input lag measured a very responsive 21 milliseconds in both 1080p SDR and 4K HDR modes, which is an improvement over last year's XF90, particularly at sub-4K resolution. In summary, the 65-inch Sony XG95 offers a selection of upgrades over the XF90, namely for full bandwidth HDMI 2.0b ports, lower input lag, 20-point grayscale and advanced color management system for more accurate calibration, more effective dynamic tone mapping for HDR10 content, enhanced ARC or ERRC, slicker Android TV navigation, and last but not least, a more premium remote control befitting a high-end television. I always find it unfair to compare the prices of a brand new model, namely this XG95, against its predecessor, which has been out for a year and therefore has seen significant price decrease. Of course, the older model is going to provide better value for money. The same can be said of the LG C8 vs C9, Panasonic FZ802 vs GZ950, or Samsung Q9 FN vs Q90R. I prefer to judge any TV against its competition within the same model year, and in 2019, the Sony XG95 will face stiff competition from the Samsung Q80R which also features full array local dimming and is available at around the same price. Taking one step back for a wider perspective, I think the days of Sony developing a high-performing 4K LED LCD TV in the league of the XC93, XC94 and ZD9 are officially over now that the company is firmly on the OLED train. As someone who values picture quality, of course I'd prefer if Sony had implemented more local dimming zones, higher peak brightness and wider garbage coverage on the XG95 or X950G, but more local dimming zones means more LEDs, higher peak brightness requires more powerful backlight, wider color garbage needs perhaps quantum dot technology, and when you add up all these base manufacturing costs to make a super duper LED LCD, it just doesn't make commercial sense anymore. Not when OLED TV, with its inherent self emissive strength of true blacks, vibrant colors, wide viewing angles, and super slim design, can be built and sold with more profit. The only reason why Samsung are pushing 4K LED LCD innovation is because they don't have OLED on their books, and I can guarantee you. Once they get their Quantum Dot OLED operational and price competitive, they'll abandon high-performing LED LCD faster than Liam Neeson can churn out Taken clone movies. With this market reality in mind, and on account of accurate colors, superb video processing, and mesmerizing motion performance, the Sony 65 XG9505 earns our highly recommended award. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.